Hello and welcome to Nicholas Genetics Lessons and today's video is going to be about how to understand pedigree and uh, the first question, question A states the most likely mode of inheritance of this disease, choose from autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-link dominant and X-link recessive. Let's start with the end of this list, X-link recessive. So could be this X-link recessive, so we have one and here is a second person who is affected so could uh, any of these parents have a defective allele on the X chromosome for example uh, could uh, this female have uh, this genetic disorder because male cannot have this genetic disorder because male's genotype is X and Y chromosome if X would be defective, so I use red color. Uh, of course, such a person would be affected with this genetic disorder because males doesn't have another X chromosome to balance this uh, X chromosome with defective allele on it. So whenever male would have even recessive uh, genetic disorder that is on the X uh, chromosome, phenotype of the male would be affected, but we see here that phenotype of this male is not affected. So that means that uh, his uh, X chromosome would be normal. So his uh, genotype have to be normal X chromosome and normal Y chromosome. But this female here may have uh, this genetic disorder on one of the chromosomes and uh, Let's put her genotype here, so one defective X chromosome, one normal X chromosome. Uh, she also cannot have two defective uh, alleles on two X chromosomes, otherwise her uh, phenotype also would be affected when she would have two uh, X-link recessive alleles. So uh, here we would have defective X chromosome from the mother side, normal X chromosome from the uh, father side, defective X chromosome from the mother side, normal Y chromosome from the father side and two normal X chromosomes here and normal X and Y chromosome here. So as you see, if it is going to be X-link recessive genetic disorder, none of the females would be affected. Those 50% of them would be heterozygous, just like their mother. Still, uh, this would produce normal phenotype, the same as homozygous uh, phenotype, homozygous normal. But 50% of the male progeny would be affected. And what we see here on this picture, we see that one of the females are affected with this genetic disorder and her parents phenotypically normal. So we can say that this is not X-link recessive genetic disorder. Now let's think if this can be X-link dominant genetic disorder. Uh, if this would be X-link dominant genetic disorder, of course, uh, father of these children would be affected. So father cannot have this genetic disorder or otherwise his phenotype would be affected. Could mother have this X-linked dominant genetic disorder? She would have two X uh, chromosomes. Uh, even if one chromosome uh, would have dominant uh, X-linked genetic disorder, her phenotype also would be affected. So it's impossible for the children to have this X-linked dominant genetic disorder if parents doesn't have this genetic disorder. So we can cross out this variant also. So now we have to choose between autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive. So if this genetic disorder would be autosomal dominant, once again, if uh, for example, uh, male genotype would be capital A and uh, normal small a, that means that this male would be affected with this genetic disorder. If uh, female here also would have the same 
genotype, she also would be affected. So we can say this is not autosomal dominant genetic disorder. So we can cross out this variant. And uh, let's think about autosomal recessive. These parents may have this genetic disorder if it is autosomal recessive and be phenotypically normal if these parents are heterozygous. So the genotype would be capital A, normal uh, dominant allele, and defective recessive allele. So one parent would be heterozygous, another parent also would be heterozygous, and when we build the Punnett square, we can see that uh, the progeny, some of them also can be uh, affected and some can be phenotypically normal. So here we would have uh, capital A, capital A, capital A, and small a here, capital A, and small a here, and small a, small a here. So these three genotypes would make normal phenotype, and this genotype here would make uh, phenotypes that would be affected. So what we see here, that uh, this couple have children, and some of them affected, and some of them unaffected. So we can say that genotype of the parents would be capital A and small a, so parents would be heterozygous, and uh, those children who is affected with this genetic disorder, the genotype would be small a, small a, and small a, small a. So uh, we can say that this is autosomal recessive genetic disorder. Next question B. Uh, write all possible genotypes of the following individuals in the pedigree. Use the uppercase A for the allele associated with the dominant phenotype and the lowercase A for the allele associated with the recessive uh, phenotype. So uh, let's finish our pedigree. And uh, this person here is not uh, genetically related to these parents here. Uh, so uh, all outcrossers would be phenotypically and genotypically normal if we consider that this is rare genetic disorder. So uh, what about these children of this couple? We cannot say whether they are homozygous dominant or heterozygous. We know for sure that one of the alleles would be a dominant normal dominant allele A. So we can put dominant allele a here and blank space for the second allele because it can be another dominant allele or recessive allele. So genotype here also would be dominant allele A and blank space and dominant allele A and blank space here. And the last question, question C, what is the probability that individual 5 will be a carrier? So here is uh, individual 5. And let's first find uh, genotypes of these three children of this couple. As you see, one of the parents is homozygous dominant, another is homozygous recessive. That means that all the children would be heterozygous and would have one dominant allele and one recessive allele. And uh, if this person uh, that is shown with asterisk here. Uh, we also assume that this person is not genetically related to this couple. In other words, would be outcrosser and his genotype would be capital A, capital A. Now it would be very easy to predict the genotype uh, or probability of the heterozygous genotype of the person number five. So carrier, in other words, we call heterozygous. So what is the probability that uh, person number five would be heterozygous when one of the parents is homozygous dominant and another parent is heterozygous?
Outcome of such a cross, very easy to predict, so we put a genotype of one parent on the top, another male parent on the side, and when we build a Punnett square, as you see, the result of such a cross would be capital A, capital A here, capital A, capital A here, capital A and small a here, and capital A and small a here. So what do we see here? Because this is uh, autosomal recessive genetic disorder, 100% of such a cross would be phenotypically normal. But the question is, what is the probability that the progeny or person number 5 would be a carrier? And as you see, the probability would be 1 half, or 2 out of 4, that is the same, or 50%. So we can uh, put genotypes here. This is can be capital A and small a, and capital A, small a. So we put uh, capital A and blank space, or it can be capital A, capital A, as you see, chances are equal. And, uh, of course, in order to finish our pedigree here, if this parent is heterozygous, that means that uh, this person got his recessive allele from one of uh, his parents. But we don't know which of the parent, but we know that both of them are phenotypically normal, but at least one of them would be a carrier. So we can put capital A and blank space here, capital A and blank space here, and uh, capital A blank space here. And of course, uh, if this side of the family also has a recessive allele, the same rules apply to uh, this uh, person. Her parents have to be, at least one of them, have to be heterozygous. We don't know uh, which one of the parent. So we put capital A and blank space for both of them. If they both are heterozygous, of course uh, the progeny may have uh, dominant and recessive allele, so we put also capital A and blank space for all the offspring. So uh, it seems like I put uh, genotypes everywhere on this uh, pedigree and this is all for today thank you for attention please subscribe for my new videos that i post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video please write your comments questions if you have any and see you in the next video goodbye